I looked at the, the nameless of the people that have been invited to this forum. I'm thinking to myself, we've got parliamentarians, a former bar president, senior distinguished lawyers, two um, uh, uh, law, constitutional law lecturers, and then you got me. What can I possibly give to all of you that would not have already been said by the rest. But thankfully, thankfully, I'm number three, so at least I've still got things to say before the rest. <laughs> now, um, we're talking about section 124B of the Penal Code. First point to note, 124B falls under chapter 6 of the Penal Code. Chapter 6 of the Penal Code includes offences such as waging war against the Yang Dipertuan Agong. Do you remember Al-Ma'unah? They were charged and found guilty under that particular offence. Okay? And uh, for Chapter 6, Offences Against the State, and also Chapter 6A, Terrorism Offences, the authorities can actually use the special offences, SOSMA, I can't remember the name, uh, Security Offences and Special Measures Act, SOSMA. Now, you may have heard of SOSMA. Um, it was supposed to replace the ISA, okay? Remember when the Prime Minister made the announcement that ISA will go? The act that was supposed to replace the ISA was SOSMA. This was before POCA, before POTA. Okay? So SOSMA is supposed to be a watered-down kind of ISA because instead of two years, 60 days detention and then two years detention, you only have 28 days detention. So going back, actually, if it is an offence under part, uh, Chapter 6 and 6A, SOSMA can be used. They have not used it, thankfully, but if they decide they can actually use SOSMA. And what does that mean? That means all these people who are supposedly uh, carrying out activities detrimental to parliamentary democracy, they can arrest these people and detain them for 28 days without obtaining a remand order. That's for investigation purposes. Okay? But 28 days after 28 days, they either have to uh, release these people or charge them in court. More worryingly, if these people are charged in court and they invoke SOSMA, SOSMA also provides special procedures which are different from normal procedures, different from the criminal procedure code, different from uh, uh, evidentiary procedure. Number one, a person who's charged and if SOSMA is invo invoked, that person cannot get bail. Okay? So, cannot get bail unless uh, um, he's sick or he's a woman and, and there's a few other things. That's number one. Number two, there are also special rules which are different from normal evidentiary, evidentiary rules. For example, under SOSMA, you can have secret witnesses. Witnesses who you don't know who their identities are. The only people who know who these, uh, uh, these witnesses are is the prosecution and the court. Even the defense counsel 
would not know who that witness is. Other things, for example, they don't need to prove uh, or rather bring to court the actual exhibit. So meaning, for example, if they say that, oh, A has written this in his notebook, they don't actually have to bring that notebook, they can bring a photocopy. Okay? Those kind of rules. What are the other things? It also says, any items seized in a raid will be admissible in evidence. So these are the things which SOSMA allows. And people keep looking at the 28 days and saying that, you know, this is, this is bad, this is bad. No, ladies and gentlemen, the mischief of SOSMA is actually in the trial, in the evidentiary rules, in the procedures, when people are this one. 28 days uh, uh, detention, yes, we would like that it would be under judicial scrutiny, so a remand uh, hearing it should take place and so on and so forth. But I think uh, uh, because of the fact that they have to either release these people or charge them, that's not the main issue with SOSMA. Of course, later on, uh, uh, after SOSMA, you have POCA and POTA, which throws all the so-called promises of uh, abolishing ISA and so on and so forth out of the window. But that's for you to, to, to understand. Now, when SOSMA was passed by parliament, okay, as I mentioned, it was to repeal the ISA. And it was packaged together with three other amendments to existing laws. Number one, the Penal Code, number two, the Evidence Act, and number three, the Criminal Procedure Code. So all these were packaged as anti-terror legislation. They say that we need to, we, we won't have ISA, so we still need to deal with terrorists. So here, anti-terrorism laws. And of course, it was passed by Parliament by sheer brute force of the numbers that they have. Now, what is 124B? 124B provides that whoever, by any means, directly or indirectly, commits an activity detrimental to parliamentary democracy shall be punished with imprisonment for a term which may extend to 20 years. So maximum, 20 years. So it's a serious offence. It's a serious offence. And what is known as activity parliamentary, what does it mean? Well, you look at section 13 a of the penal code which says that activity detrimental to parliamentary democracy means an activity carried out by a person or a group of persons designed to overthrow or undermine parliamentary democracy by violent or constitutional means and that's it so what does it mean undermine parliamentary democracy what does it mean by unconstitutional means? These, ladies and gentlemen, are imprecise words. These are words which are not clear. And we won't have any guidance in the penal code, the act itself. And um, when these laws were, were uh, presented or tabled in parliament, civil society, as well as the Malaysian bar, had serious reservations and we've expressed them serious reservations about, amongst others, SOSMA, but about 124B as well. I'm quoting from a memorandum prepared by the Malaysian Bar, where the Malaysian Bar said that, this offence seemed designed to curtail and criminalise legitimate democratic activity alongside the activity of overthrowing or attempting to overthrow parliamentary democracy by violent means. The definition of activity detrimental to parliamentary democracy has too broad a scope. It should only criminalize violent conduct. So because it is not clear and it is imprecise, that is why we see what we are seeing right now, where the authorities put their own interpretation of what activities detrimental to parliamentary democracy means. So that's why you have where people report on, on an issue, okay, like the EDGE or Sarawak report, that's activity detrimental to parliamentary democracy. People who are investigating something, like, for example, the BNM, Baris, uh, uh, the Bank Negara Malaysia officers, as well as the MACC officers, that investigation under 124B. People who are protesting against what is happening, also 124B. And people say, look, 
you know, if, you, if you're brought to court, you can argue that, you know, you are not involved with all these things. But you have to remember one thing. Sometimes it doesn't need to, 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 to be brought to court even. The very fact that the authorities can use this to arrest persons, to detain them, and then ask for remand order, that is sometimes enough. That is enough to cause harassment, intimidation. So, ladies and gentlemen, that is why whenever we want to pass these kind of laws, laws providing for offences, laws which uh, uh, restrict, which will restrict fundamental liberties, we must push that two elements be in. Number one, the law must be specific and clear. And number two, the law must have sufficient safeguards. I've touched upon how the law is unclear, and I think the same arguments can be made about the Sedition Act as well. The list of what is seditious under the Seditious Tendency List is so wide that it can actually cover almost anything that anyone does. It's the same thing. Here, it is also so imprecise that it can be used arbitrarily. And number two, on safeguards. Now, I've been looking at the Hansards, the discussions uh, in Parliament at that particular point in time, and the one thing which uh, the government keeps harping is this. Trust us, we will not abuse the law. <laughs> Again, we saw it during POTA. We saw it during POTA as well. The whole idea is trust us. We will only use this against terrorists. But ladies and gentlemen, Number one, we have a trust deficit. The government has a trust deficit. Okay? It's not enough that we say, they just say, trust us. We have seen the ISA. The ISA was supposed to combat militant communists. But we saw what was used, what, what it was used for. People like parliamentarians, bloggers, reporters arrested under the ISA. So just this guarantee by the government is not enough. And that's why we keep saying you need to have sufficient safeguards. For POTA, we keep pushing. Why is it that there's no judicial scrutiny? Why is it that you're completely circumventing the courts? No answer except percaya lah. We can't have this, ladies and gentlemen. We cannot have this. So, um, <clears throat> lastly, ladies and gentlemen, I think we really need to push for the next uh, 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 great uh, battle, or rather the great, the great cause that we should embark upon is parliamentary reform. Because it's only through parliamentary reform that these kind of laws will not see the light of day. You know, a lot of talk has been made about how uh, 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 MPs debated POTA into the night and, you know, there was like a long debate on it. And... With all due respect, I know, for example, YB Gobin and YB Hanipa was there, were there, they were there, and they were arguing the cause, which is good. But, ladies and gentlemen, in other countries, important laws like this do not get passed in a matter of days. They would have committees set up to go through the law. This is not a law to regulate uh, 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 the uh, 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 collection of uh, 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 swallow's nest or something like that. You know, this is an, a law that will, that will uh, affect everyone. And yet, we pass it in a matter of days. First tabling, few days after that, passed. And let's not even talk about the Dewan Negara. Lah. I don't know why it goes there, because uh, it will still be passed. At least there's some debate in the Dewan Rakyat. So, ladies and gentlemen, we need to push for parliamentary reforms. We need to push uh, for more consultation. <laughs> Is that a signal for me to stop? <laughs> I think I've said enough um, um, about this, and, and I think maybe later on for the uh, uh, Q&A. But I just want to end this uh, with my closing remarks. Number one, yes, we have laws like 124B, Yes, we have laws like the Sedition Act. Yes, we have laws like POTA and POCA. And yes, ladies and gentlemen, I can guarantee you in October, they are going to 
put in a law to regulate social media. Yes, we are seeing all these things. What do they want to do actually? Not only do they want you to stop talking, they want to you to stop thinking. Really, they want to imprison your mind to stop saying what needs to be said. But we must not give in to this. We must not give in to this climate of fear that they are trying to create. Malaysians have been speaking out, you know, ever since I think 2008, even before that, have been speaking out and we should not stop now. And I just want to end with the wise words of Samwise Gamgee from Lord of the Rings. It's like in the great stories, Mr. Frodo, the ones that really mattered, full of darkness and danger they were. And sometimes you don't want to know the end. Because how can the end be happy? How can the world go back to the way it was when so much bad has happened? But in the end, it's only a passing thing, the shadow. Even darkness must pass. A new day will come. And when the sun shines, it will shine out the clearer. And those, Mr. Frodo, were the stories that stayed with you. That meant something even if you were too small to understand why. But I think, Mr. Frodo, I do understand. I know now, folks in those stories had lot of lots of chances of turning back, but they did because they were holding on to something. Ladies and gentlemen, Malaysians, we should hold on to something. We should never turn back. Because the road is clear. If we want to build a better Malaysia, we must persevere. Thank you.